This is a video solution to the vending machine task. This task is to write some unit tests for this vending machine class. This class models a vending machine which vends candy bars at a price of three coins each. And the task is to test this class. First we're going to test it manually, then we're going to write a table of test cases, and then we'll translate those test cases into unit test functions using JUnit. We'll start by reading the class to see what it's supposed to do. We can see that the price of a candy bar is 3, and the capacity of the machine is 20 candy bars. The machine has three fields, which are the number of candy bars in the machine, the balance in the machine, and the revenue. We'll see what those do when we read the methods. When we create a new vending machine, the number of candy bars is initially the full capacity of the, the vending machine. The balance will initially be 0, and the revenue will initially be 0. We've got getters for the balance and revenue. We have this method named insert coin, which is going to increase the balance by one. So when we insert a coin, the balance goes up. There's this method named refund, which is going to reset the balance to zero, as you can see on line 29. But as well as resetting the balance to zero, it will return what the balance was before you asked for the refund. So we can understand this method as asking for my coins back. After I've inserted some coins, then I should get the number of coins that I inserted back, as well as resetting the balance to zero. The most complicated of these methods is the vend candy bar method, which starts on line 33. And there's an if else here, so there are two different cases. If the number of candy bars in the machine is at least one, and the balance is at least the price of a candy bar, so I've inserted enough coins, then the machine will have one fewer candy bars in it, the balance will go down by the price of a candy bar, and the revenue will go up by the price of the candy bar, and this method will return true. Otherwise, if there aren't any candy bars in the machine, if this candy bars variable will be zero, or the balance is less than the candy price, then this method will return false. Finally, there's this method named restock, which just resets the number of candy bars to be the capacity of the machine, which is 20 candy bars. So once we understand what this class does and what it's supposed to do, uh, we're going to test this class, and we're going to start by testing it manually. So manually means that we're going to use the code pad to write some code to test that this class behaves as it should. And I've given you six test cases, or at least six descriptions of test cases um, to perform uh, for manual testing, and those are numbered 1 to 6 in the list on the left here. So to start off with, we're going to need to create a new vending machine. So this is the code to create a vending machine, and I've also declared a variable named a machine, which will hold a reference to the vending machine. As you can see here, I've called the constructor with no parameters, because the constructor here takes no parameters, so I should give it no parameters. So this is how I create a vending machine in this class. Um, we're going to test that the balance is zero, so I'm going to check that machine.getBalance, that's the way I look at the balance, I'm going to check that that gives me zero, and it does, so that's okay. Um, we want these tests to be independent of each other, so I'm going to create a new machine for the next test. If I use a new, mach new machine for each separate test, then we can be sure that the results of each test don't affect the results of any other test. We're going to check that the initial revenue is zero, so we're going to call the getRevenue method, and we get a zero for that, so this test passes as well. And again, I'm going to create a new vending machine for the next test. So if you press up in the code pad, you can repeat a previous uh, statement that you've written. We're going to insert some coins and then check that the balance has increased but the revenue hasn't. So let's call machine.insertCoin, and this is a void method, so this is a statement and I need a semicolon for this. I'm going to insert two coins, and then I'm going to ask to see the current balance, and that should have gone up to two, which it has. And I'm also going to ask to see the current revenue, which should still be zero, so this test passes. The next thing we're going to do is request a refund. So the next test, again, I want this to be independent, so I'll create a new vending machine. We're going to insert some coins. I'm going to insert two coins. And when I get my refund, I want to have the correct amount refunded, which should be two. So if I call the refund method, I should see this returns two, and it does. And I want also the balance of this machine to be reset to zero. So when I see get balance, I want to see a zero here, and I do. So this test has passed. The next test I want to do is 
the fifth one, if no coins are inserted, no candy bar is vended. So we're going to create a new machine for this so our tests are all independent. And then I'm not going to insert any coins, I'm just going to ask it to vend a candy bar. So that's the name of this method, vend candy bar with capital C and capital B. I'm expecting a false from this, and I do see a false, so this test passes. This false indicates that no candy bar was vended. And then for the sixth test, again, I'm going to create a new fresh vending machine object for this test. We're going to insert three coins, so I'm going to call the insert coin method three times. Then we're going to vend a candy bar, so I'm going to call the machine.vendCandyBar method. And I'm expecting this to return true because it should vend a candy bar once I've paid for it. And this does return true. But I also need to check that the balance is now zero because I've spent my three coins. So machine.getBalance should give me zero, and it does. And the revenue should now be three because those three coins that we spent are now inside the machine's uh, box that we can't get out unless we've got the key. So if I call machine.getRevenue, then we'll see three, which means that all of these tests have passed correctly. The next part of this task is to write test cases, or a table of test cases, which will include the input actions and expected results. The input is always going to be a new vending machine object, as we did in these test cases. The actions are going to be whichever methods we called here to perform the test, including inserting coins before we try to vend a candy bar and calling methods afterwards to check that the result is correct. And then we should also write what the expected results we should see are for the, for the tests to pass. So let's open a t text editor. I'm going to write a table here with inputs, actions, and expected results. And let's make these headings bold. And the input is always going to be a new vending machine. The action for the first one, to check that the initial balance is zero, we're going to call the get balance method, and we expect the result to be zero. For the second test, we want the initial revenue to be zero, so we're going to call the get revenue method, and we expect the result to be zero as well. For the third test, we need to insert coins and then check that the balance has increased but the revenue has not. So we're going to call insert coin, and then we're going to call insert coin again, so that we've inserted two coins, and then we're going to call get balance and get revenue. And then we expect the results of these to be that the balance is two, but the revenue is zero. So we've got two expected results in this case. For the test case number four, we want to request a refund, but we want to make sure that the correct amount is refunded and that the balance is reset. So we're going to again insert two coins. And then we're going to call refund to get a refund, and then we're going to call get balance to make sure that the balance has been reset. And I want two coins back from the refund method and zero for the balance after I've had my refund. For test case number five, we're going to call the vend candy bar method. And we expect this to simply give me a false as the result. That's all I want to test in this case, that I don't get a candy bar when I've inserted no coins. And finally, we're going to actually vend a candy bar successfully. We're going to insert three coins. Then we're going to call vend candy bar and that should give me a true. And we're also going to check that the balance is now zero because we've spent our money. So we're going to call get balance and we're going to call get revenue. So we expect that I get a true when I vend the candy bar. It should be lowercase t for true. I should get zero for the balance and I should get three for the revenue. So this is my table of test cases for this class. These six rows in the table correspond with each of the six tests that we're going to do here, but I've translated these tests from English into sort of code, um, but these are individual test cases where I've said what I'm going to do, and I, 
what I expect the result to be. So finally, we're going to use these test cases to write unit tests using JUnit. And I've started with the bare bones structure of this class, which is given to you. So I've got the basic structure of the class named vending machine test. We're creating this vending machine. And I, in this case, I only have to write the new vending machine line once and because this will be called before each test independently. And then there are test methods for each of the six test cases we're going to write. And these are annotated with the at test annotation. So let's write each of these. And now that I've written my table of test cases, it's fairly straightforward for me to write these using the JUnit syntax. So we're going to use the assert equals method, which we've imported from the JUnit library. That's the import statement on line two that allows us to use this method. And what we want to assert is that zero is what we get when we call get balance. So this is a very straightforward test to write. This should be machine.getBalance. This is very straightforward because all we're doing is calling one method and asserting that we get the correct result. Note here that when we use assert equals, the expected result comes before the actual result. So this is the action we're performing. This is the expected result here. Let's also test the initial revenue. So we're going to write assert equals, and then the action is called the get revenue method and the expected result is zero. So we're gonna write machine.getRevenue for test case number three, we have to do two calls to insert coin before we can continue with this test. So I'm just going to write machine.insert coin. And because this method is void, it doesn't return anything. So there's nothing for me to assert about this method, but we need to call two other methods to assert that the results are correct. So I'm going to write assert equals, and the correct result is two from get balance. And the correct result is zero from get revenue. So that's my insert coin test. The next test is for the refund method. And again, we have to set this up. So I'm going to insert two coins. And then I'm going to assert that when I ask for a refund, I get two coins back. And this is when I call the refund method. So that's this call here. I want to get two out. And then I'm going to call get balance, which is the last action. And then the balance should be zero. So let's test when we fail to get a candy bar out of the machine. I don't need to do any setup for this. All I need to do is call the vend candy bar method and assert that I get a false as my result. So I'll use the assert false method for this. And the value I want to assert is false is the result of machine dot get uh, vend candy bar. So that's my vend failure test. For the vend success case, we need to insert three coins. And then I need to call vend candy bar. And I need to assert that the result of this method is true. So I'll use the assert true method for this. So machine.vend candy bar is the action, and then that should return true. And then we need the balance to be zero. So we'll assert equals zero machine.getBalance. And then I need the revenue to be three. So we're going to assert equals three machine.getRevenue. So this is my set of unit tests for this class. I've got these six unit tests that correspond with the six tests we performed manually and the six test cases in our table. Let's compile this class and we can run the tests to see if they pass. And we can see that all six of these tests pass in this case. Now this doesn't actually mean that we've written the tests correctly. What this should mean is that the class is written correctly. So the vending machine class is correct as far as we know. Um, but the only real way to, for us to know that our tests are correct is by reading them and thinking logically. Just because the tests pass does not mean that the tests are written correctly. So one of the reasons that we want our tests to be as simple as possible 
is that we want it to be obvious from reading them that this is actually the correct result. So I want it to be obvious that I should get a true out of the vend candy bar method after inserting three coins. So this is a complete solution to the vending machine test activity. That's the end of this video. In the next video, we'll show the solutions for the query string test task.